hello beautiful people and welcome back to a new video my name is Evelyn Borta I hope all of you are doing well so in today's video we will be talking about humanity and this shift in consciousness that we are going through right now and also what shifts in consciousness our planet has been has been through in the past and then humanity as a result of that and then also we will be talking about this crossroads that humanity is uh, facing right now, this choice that we are about to make. And we are in the process of making that choice, which is whether to go in a direction of organic evolution or in a direction of um, synthetic path, synthetic timeline that is not organic. And then, yeah, we will be talking about how to deal with this transhumanist agenda and how to kind of avoid it. And the truth is that in the future and maybe in the next decade, we will hear more and more about interdimensionals, extraterrestrials. And uh, in order for that information to come through in the right way, we do have to have a spiritual background. We do have to have an understanding of that. What are these interdimensionals? Because... What I have noticed on myself as well and everyone is that there are bits and pieces of, of information coming from different directions, like a little bit of information from here, then a little bit of information from there. And there's no real structure of that information. And there's no real structure of humanity's past and the human origin either. So in the future, I will be making videos that are making it easier to understand where we are coming from, who we are. And this is how we can understand where we are heading and maybe how we can avoid to get to a divergent timeline, a synthetic timeline. So it's not only that we are getting bits and pieces of information from everywhere, but we are also getting misinformation. And there's this chaotic understanding, this confusion about the human origin as well, who these extraterrestrial beings are. And that is the main point. There's no real teaching about and material there is not a lot of material out there that is helping us to understand who we really are and that there's no discernment we cannot develop discernment if we don't understand who we are we don't understand ourselves that is the key for discernment to understand ourselves so we know what to avoid and what to embrace as well so yeah, it is key to understand the life cycle of our planet and where we are coming from and the different epochs as well that humanity has been through. And if we don't understand that, we can fall into the trap of believing that we have been created by some negative extraterrestrials like the Anunnaki, for example, and that we are carrying their DNA. And that is a very common teaching in the New Age community and a very common like misinformation that many people believe and there was some time as well when i believe that humanity has been probably seeded by extraterrestrials but that's not entirely true so anyways i want to talk more about this in the future because that is important to create a structure about this and my videos will be based on my process of remembering and then also my research. Because also by adopting the teachings of certain channelers that are channeling information from interdimensionals or theories about extraterrestrials being our parents and humanity being on a level of uh, kindergarten and being a very young species, that are needing direction is not true. What actually happened with the human race is that we descended from a higher dimension and then we have gone through different epochs and then now we are in the process of ascension again. So like we are doing this U-turn, which I talked about in my previous video. All right, so one of the misinformation that is also linked to this transhumanist agenda is that there's a group of extraterrestrials that are our saviors and we can call them the galactic federation so there's a lot of uh, misunderstanding about the galactic federation as well and many people look at these federations and, and these councils as some councils and federations and groups that are our saviors and that are treating us like children and they are going to solve our problems, our environmental problems, our social problems and political problems, and they will save us and 
kind of they will show us the way because we are kind of incapable of doing that by ourselves. So if this information is not being looked at properly and with discernment, then it can get very disempowering for us, for our race. And it is part of the propaganda that is fueling and it's feeding this transhumanist agenda as well, that humanity is incapable of evolution. And the, the highest faculty of a man, the highest faculty of the human race is intellect. And that intellect can be used as well in tandem with the power of technology and the power of artificial intelligence. And merging the human consciousness with artificial intelligence is something that will evolve the human race further. So that is false. And I said it already that everything that is promoting a synthetic way of evolving is false and it doesn't have humanity's best interest at heart. So whoever is promoting that and whoever is pro promoting the fact that this planet wasn't our planet, but it was the planet of the Anunnaki or the planet of reptilians and we were created to become slaves is also false. It is also part of this transhumanist agenda and the propaganda that is, that is fueling that agenda. So we often hear like um, more evolved extraterrestrial species, like some more evolved species have helped humanity to prevent certain catastrophic events from happening. They kind of saved humanity from destroying itself. And that there were some theories about greys visiting as well the earth and the increasing of the, the sightings, like the UFO sightings on the Earth after the Second World War. And that happened because they were trying to help us not to destroy ourselves. And that's not the case because they were, yes, indeed, like increased sightings of UFOs after the Second World War. But that happened because the Greys, which I will be talking about um, in a few minutes, so the Greys received permission, they got permission to re-enter the atmosphere of the Earth and they got permission for the abductions as well in exchange for their technology. And there were some agreements made by powerful people, people in power and the Greys. So we often hear a lot of stories about abductions of the Greys and what is happening is that the Greys are actually a product of a transhumanist agenda. That degenerate timeline, that divergent timeline on which the human race did not pass the initiation and they did not evolve in an organic way, but they evolved in an inorganic way via their technology, so in a synthetic way. So what the greys are doing with the initiation of the contact now is that they are hoping to re-enter this human stream, this organic stream, because they messed it up. So they messed up their own evolution and they are incapable of reproducing. That's why they have missing genitals and they don't have hair and their head is much bigger compared to their body. So when you look at the greys, you can actually see the future of humanity that chose a synthetic path, that chose a transhumanist path. And what they are doing now with the contact that they are initiating, as I said, is that they are super crazy about and obsessed about hybridization. And they are desperately needing the human DNA so they can re-enter that human consciousness. They can re-enter the live stream. But then at the same time, they want to modify genetically the human race because that is the way for them that they are hoping that they will be able to incarnate as a human in a human body. So they messed up their timeline. They degenerated themselves as their synthetic evolution and they are coming back and they are influencing humanity as well. And they are playing a big part in this genetic modification of humanity. So I believe that the inoculation as well that happened was part of that agenda. And we don't know exactly how that agenda is working out. I believe that that was the reason behind the multiple shots. And the human consciousness can be lowered increasingly. So like progressively, not all of a sudden that was the reason behind uh, multiple shots.
So it wouldn't happen straight away, but that synthetic modification, like gene modification and therapy would be needed to, to be done maybe for many years, depending on the individual, in order to transform the human body into something synthetic. So the goal is to lower the human consciousness so they can incarnate into it because humanity has quite a higher level of uh, frequency. And these degenerate divergent beings would not be able to incarnate into a human body when it's in its natural form. So the bioenergetic field of the body has to be changed. And that is why many people that are healers and are clairvoyant could see that after a person taking a shot, their bioenergetic field would change. So the whole goal of this agenda is to disconnect the human being from its natural evolution. And when you are disconnected from your natural evolution, which you are absolutely capable of, and you don't need anything synthetic and anything external to mess with your evolution or to initiate you, so when a human being is disconnected from its natural evolution, then it becomes degraded over time. So it starts to degrade. And this is what essentially happened with the grace as well. So when we hear stories about the grace that they are at the verge of extinction and that's why they need a human, human DNA, that's not the case. Of course, they are at the verge because they did not choose a natural evolution. And I heard stories that we need to have the greys because otherwise they will go extinct. Well, the greys are future versions of us. If we have the greys with their technology and degrading the human race, then essentially we are shooting ourselves in the foot. So yeah, use discernment when you hear stories like that from, from channelers. Because the amount of misinformation and psyops are just absolutely incredible when it comes to that. Also, when we hear information about a group of extraterrestrials helping humanity to, not helping humanity, but saving humanity from certain agendas, negative agendas, that they did not let certain things happen. That is also partially true, but it's not because something external is uh, more superior or more evolved than us. And they can decide for us because we are incapable of saving ourselves. That's a very disempowering idea and theory. The goal of it is to disempower you. So we were not saved because someone is wiser than us. But we prevented certain things from happening because of our collective desires and collective consciousness and our collective creative powers. So we prevented those things from happening. There was no galactic federation that prevented those things. A higher being and a group of extraterrestrials that were teaching humans in the past as well, because they were, they were future versions of humans that were represented by different planetary spheres, which were versions of the earth as well, they did teach humanity, they did teach humans and helped humans with their evolution, but they didn't help by interfering in anything physically, or they did not help by modifying genetically the human race. They would never ever force anything onto humanity. They would not hybridize them. They would not mess with their DNA, no. An evolved future human being or interdimensional, whatever you want to call them, that are genuinely helping, they would never interfere with the physicality of a person. They would work maybe with the etheric body of a human and the astral body of the human, and that would naturally change their physicality. That would mean evolving and changing naturally. Alteration of the DNA is not a natural evolution. It's unnecessary because the human race is capable of evolving naturally and organically. And this is the path actually that we need to take. So evolution, organic evolution doesn't happen from the outside in, but it's happening from the inside out. Okay, it doesn't happen with physical alterations. It happens with the evolution of the soul, the evolution of the astral body maybe that is affecting the physical form as well. So the human evolution is happening 
uh, as and it's, it's a gradual process and it's happening together with the cosmos as well with the evolution of the cosmos and as the cosmos expands and as the divine expands as well because it is ever expanding the divine consciousness is ever expanding and the cosmos as well is ever expanding therefore we are ever expanding as well so we are direct fractals of the divine and we are evolving together with the cosmos and we are a direct expression of this evolution as well we are a direct expression of of the cosmos and as i said humanity has been going through a process of dissension like descending from these different epochs so we have been through different epochs over time for example like the polarian epoch and then the hyperborean epoch and then the lemurian epoch so we went lower and lower in consciousness and that was necessary in order for experiencing polarity so there was this split in consciousness and this individualization of the consciousness understanding what the negative polarity is and what is the positive polarity so we can discern good from evil and by experiencing these different polarities we can develop our our discernment as well so this is how humanity is is going to evolve essentially and it's a natural process so as i said we went uh, from these higher epochs to lower epochs and the planet itself has has shifted throughout these epochs from uh, higher levels to lower levels and after the Lemurian one was the Atlantean epoch as well, which I will be talking about. So I will make a video about Lemuria and I will make a video about Atlantis as well to understand what really happened there. And then we descended into the lowest level, the Iron Age. And at the moment, we are finding ourselves in the lowest level of consciousness, in the lowest expression of the earth is the densest expression, is the expression of the material. So this is very materialistic level. And then now we are ascending again. So we are going up, up, up. Yeah, there are actually seven phases of this consciousness shift. And uh, just to let you know that all these shifts and all these phases are happening naturally and are all a gradual process and they are happening according to the cosmos, as I said, and according to the sun. So by the sun changing, our planet is changing as well and is going through this gradual shift. So we are at the Iron Age at the moment, which is the densest one. And then we will go up to the bronze one and then silver age and then the golden age. So now the only way is up again. And this natural evolution of humanity as i said is happening according to the cosmos and the energies that the planet is receiving and at the end of each of these epochs there's a split in consciousness and this is what happened at the the time of the of atlantis as well this is what is happening now as well this is what happened with lemuria as well like there was this shift in consciousness and the thing is that when we are approaching these end times and yeah i was talking about seven phases so there are seven phases that the the planet is going through and we are at the fourth phase right now so we have three more to go up we have the bronze we have the silver and the golden age and because the planet is going through seven phases and by the way each of the planets in our solar system as well they are all going through the same evolution and the same phases so because there are seven phases that's why we call the eighth sphere the eighth sphere so that's where the name eighth sphere is coming from so as i said we are approaching these end times and when this happens this split not everybody will be capable of shifting their energies not everybody is capable of rising their energy and shedding themselves of the ego so there's this uh, split and there's a higher earth and there is a divergent earth as well, a divergent timeline, an organic one and a synthetic one as well. And this is what we are facing right now. However, uh, this natural evolution is happening over time and it's happening over a long period of time. So it's, it, it will not happen all of a sudden. The split will not happen all of a sudden. It's a natural 
gradual process that is happening over time. So transhumanism is one of the biggest challenges that humanity is facing at the moment because the energies and the information that we are receiving every single day that we are being bombarded with is building up the energy toward this timeline. So we are capable of building up the energies now toward a desired timeline, whichever we want to choose. And it's important now to use discernment and to ask ourselves, what if humanity goes down this road? What if humanity is going down the transhumanist road? What is that we become if we choose that pathway? And what do we become if we choose our natural evolution? And it's important to understand that if we go down that transhumanist road, that synthetic road, after a while, there's no more evolution. After a while, if the soul wants to re-enter this human stream, it has to start again with the incarnation process. And the more synthetic one becomes, the harder it is to get back to that natural stream. And it's necessary to start again from this mineral form and to relearn the lessons. So it's, it's very important to ask ourselves what is that we can learn from this transhumanist agenda and whatever is going on in the world right now. And what is the best way to handle this technology that is approaching, this technological era that is, so to speak, approaching. And we can just reject the technology. We can just reject the robotization of, of the world. And we can develop a healthy relationship with technology as well. And the healthy relationship means that we are using technology, but we are not letting technology use us. And we can stop projecting our consciousness into the metaverse and into virtual reality. And we can stop our children from doing that as well. And the most important thing is to develop a very strong connection with your heart and really be in your heart all the time and let your actions be governed by your heart because when you are acting from the heart then you don't need you will need less and less technology and the connection with the heart is also what the coherency with the Christ consciousness means so acting from the Christ consciousness from that Christ stream so this is what we can do like to choose consciously to choose consciously what interactions we are having with technology every single day and how we are projecting our consciousness and be aware with where we are projecting our consciousness and where we are giving away our energy as well and our free will. So the great way for humanity in this Aquarian age that is also the age of scientific discoveries and technological advancements is not to let this technology to replace the human capabilities and not to merge our consciousness with anything that is synthetic. So this is the biggest challenge that humanity is having right now, how to find the middle way. And this is part of our initiation to develop discernment, to step into our sovereignty and to use technology in the way that is not affecting our consciousness negatively. These are the, the initiations of humanity right now. And the marketing of this transhumanism and the marketing of these different virtual realities, metaverse, artificial intelligence are super shiny and super glittery. And they are very, very welcoming. So it's easy to fall into the trap of this virtual reality and to develop a relationship that is actually unhealthy. So yeah, we have to develop awareness and definitely discernment and the discernment to, to understand what is good and what is bad for us. And to understand that whatever feels good, it's not necessarily good. And that is what essentially discernment is about. To differentiate things that feel good from things that are really good for us to overcome the level of the body and to overcome these primal instincts and what feels good for the body. So to overcome that and to rise above that. Yeah, that's, that's what discernment is about as well. 
So yeah, this is what I wanted to say in today's video. I hope it resonated. If it did, then you can feel free to subscribe to this channel. You can also feel free to check out my Patreon and what I'm posting there and what information I'm sharing there. And if you are interested, you are more than welcome to join if you want to support me uh, on my journey. And thank you everybody also who has joined my Patreon. I'm so, so grateful for all of you and everybody who is supporting me with my work. Thank you so much. So take care everyone and I cannot wait to see you next time.